Hello, I am Glenn Hall and today is May 2nd, 2023. Today's video is called The Revelation of Jesus Christ. I'm going to try to get through chapters 4 and 5 of the book of Revelation today. And I will be reading a lot of scripture. I'm not sure how much comment I will have on this, but there will certainly be revelation. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show to his servants the things that must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who bore witness to the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all that he saw. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear and who keep what is written in it, for the time is near. Jesus gave this revelation to his servant John, the Apostle John, the prophet John, who wrote the Gospel of John, the three letters, and also this, the book of Revelation. I always found verse 3 strange. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy. And then the second part, blessed are those who hear. So that's talking about me right now reading this, and it's talking about you who are hearing it. And that's not all. Blessed is the one who keeps what is written in it. Who keeps what is written in it. How do you keep the book of Revelation? I believe that you keep it by walking in the revelation, walking in the revelation of Jesus Christ, walking in the understanding of who Jesus is. I still feel that very few people really understand who Jesus is. So many people today believe that we are all Christ's, believe that we are all already gods in a body of flesh. But that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible does teach that we will be like God. But that only comes one way. And that's through the revelation of Jesus Christ. So let's go ahead and turn now to Revelation 4 and 5. Now, 4 and 5, 4, of course, follows chapters 1, 2, and 3, and chapters 2 and 3 are Christ's letters to the seven churches. So bear that in mind as we begin to read this. After this, that means after Jesus opened this book and after he gave John the, the seven letters, after this I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. After what? Well, after... Could it be after the church age? 
See, the first chapters 2 and 3 deal with the churches that exist, I believe, through the entire church age. And Jesus is disappointed in most of the churches and with most of the people in those churches. But yet he has a promise for every church and for everyone in the church who overcomes. That is, for everyone who walks in the revelation of Jesus Christ. And now suddenly, he is showing John something. Come up here and I will show you what must take place after this, after the church age. So much of what we're going to see following chapters 4 and 5 are going to deal with events that we have not seen in complete fulfillment yet. I do think that the beginning seals actually do give a history, actually do give us a picture of what has happened through the 2,000 year history since Christ was here. But then we quickly move to the Great Tribulation. So chapter 4 verse 2, At once I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne stood in heaven, and one seated on the throne. And he who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Carnelian, and around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. Around the throne were twenty-four thrones, and seated on the thrones were twenty-four elders, clothed in white garments with golden crowns on their heads. Now no one knows who these twenty-four elders are. They're probably the preeminent men who lived throughout the history of creation. Probably gathered throughout the entire 6,000 year history of the earth. Likely including people like Enoch, Moses. Representing I believe the 12 apostles and the 12 tribes of Israel. But not, I don't think that they are, for example, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and those particular people, or even the 12 apostles, even though I think John, for example, who wrote this book would be one of those. But I don't know who those 24 elders are. But they have white garments. That always represents someone who has totally been washed in the blood of the Lamb, who totally depends upon Jesus. And they have golden crowns on their heads, so they have received the crown of life. From the throne came flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder. And before the throne were burning seven torches of fire, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne, there was, as it were, a sea of glass like crystal. I want to take a few minutes to think about the seven spirits of God. Because, you see, we see those seven spirits a couple of times in the book of Revelation. The first place that we see the seven <clears throat> spirits of God are in Revelation chapter 1, verse 4. In verse 4, it says, John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the rulers, and the ruler of kings on earth. 
To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all tribes of earth will wail on account of him. Even so, amen. Then verse 8 says this, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Well, then in Revelation chapter 3, Jesus begins his letter to the church of Sardis. He says this, And to the angel of the church in Sardis write, The words of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. Well, what are the seven stars? Well, we have to go back now to Revelation chapter 1, the very end. Verse 20 says this, As for the mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. So Jesus identifying himself to Sardis, says, the words of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. Verse 20 again in Revelation 1, as for the mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand. So, Jesus showed himself to John with seven angels in his right hand. And he also has the seven stars, or the seven spirits, the seven spirits of God. And then, so we see here in Revelation 4, From the throne, verse 5, from the throne came flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder, and before the throne were burning seven torches of fire, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was, as it were, a sea of glass like crystal. So you have this picture of God on the throne. And the seven spirits are before the throne. And yet Jesus has already revealed himself as the one who has the seven spirits of God. So let's keep reading here. And around the throne, on each side of the throne, are four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind, the first living creature like a lion, the second living creature like an ox, the third living creature like with the face of a man, and the fourth living creature like an eagle in flight. Now this sounds exactly like the cherubim who appeared to the prophet Ezekiel in the Old Testament, chapter 1 of his book. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, uh uh-oh, those cherubim only had four wings. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and within. And day and night they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Now this takes us to Isaiah, I believe it's chapter 5, where these creatures appear to him. And let's go ahead and take a look at that.
Actually, it's um, Isaiah 6. <clears throat> In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And so these beings with six wings are called seraphim. They appear again in Revelation chapter 4 and in verse 8 it says, And day and night they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. So I believe that this is the seraphim or whom John saw. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne saying, Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Well, wait a minute. Didn't I recently go over Colossians chapter 1? Colossians chapter 1 Verse 15 says this, speaking of Jesus, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Now remember that phrase, Jesus is the firstborn of all creation. But to those who believe in Him, He gave the right to become sons of God. That's in John chapter 1, verse 12. He gave the right to become sons of God. So there will be others who become like him. Jesus is the firstborn of all creation, but there are going to be others. So we think God created man at the very beginning, Genesis chapter um, 1 and 2. But that was the beginning of the creation. We hadn't been born yet. Remember Jesus spoke to Nicodemus, you must be born again. That which is flesh is flesh, that which is spirit is spirit. And so Jesus is the firstborn of spirit of all creation. But there will be others who will be born. And that birthing is coming very soon. Well, let's keep going here in Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. For by him, that means by Jesus, all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. So again, for by Jesus all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. So whether it's tangible here on the earth, or whether it is a spiritual power, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, speaking of spiritual things, all things were created through him and for him. All things were created, but wait a minute. We just read in Revelation 4, the one on the throne, they cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. So is this Jesus then on the throne? 
Well, let's continue reading. Chapter 5 of Revelation. Then I saw on the right hand of him who was seated on the throne, a scroll written within and on the back sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep loudly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. And one of the elders said to me, Weep no more. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered, has overcome, so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. Well, who is the root of David? And between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders, I saw a lamb standing as though it had been slain with seven horns and with seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Well, this is Jesus, right? Here he is. He's the Lamb. That's how John the Baptist identified him in the book of John. So we see a Lamb standing as though it had been slain. And seven horns with seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into all the earth. Well, Jesus identified himself in Revelation 3, 1, the words of him who has the seven spirits of God. Revelation 1, 4. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of kings on earth. Now here in verse 4, John, uh, Revelation 1, 4, it looks like you have the Father spoken of as he who is and who was and who is to come. Then you have and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, which you would think that must be the Holy Spirit. And then, verse 5, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of kings on earth. So it sounds like you've got the Father, the Holy Spirit, and the Son represented here. But yet, isn't Jesus the one who is, but who was, because he lived in the flesh and he died, he was, and he is to come, right? We're expecting the second coming of Jesus, aren't we? So is this saying, grace to you and peace from Jesus Christ, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead. That doesn't seem to make sense. But let's go now to Revelation chapters 21 and 22. Just start reading here in verse 1 of 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. 
And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. Who is this? Is this the Father, or is this the Son? Verse 5, And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. To the one who overcomes, he will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. Well, who is this speaking? Verse 9 says, then, one, then came one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues and spoke to me saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. Okay, we're going to skip several verses now and go to Verse 22 of Revelation 21. And I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. Well, before it was sounding like we were talking about one person. Now we have the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is gives it light, and its lamp is the Lamb. So, the glory of God gives it light. And yet, its lamp is the Lamb. What does a lamp do? A lamp gives light. By its light, the lamp's light, Will the nations walk, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it, and its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. They will bring into it the glory and honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is detestable or false, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. The Lamb's book of life. I thought it was the Father's book of life. Chapter 22. Then the angels showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river, the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. Well, isn't this interesting? We see the river of the water of life. What did Jesus say about that? Let's go to John chapter 4, verse 7. A woman from Samaria came to draw water there at Jacob's well. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. 
Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Now here's another one of the verses that it's great to have your English Standard Version reference edition because in uh, John chapter 4, in this particular verse, uh, I think it's 14, the references send us to John 6.35, 51.58, John 7.37, Isaiah 49.10, and Revelation 7.16. Now, we're going to look at each one of these. So let's go to John chapter 6. Now, John chapter 6 is um, the profound chapter where Jesus reveals himself as the food of God. So, let's look at these verses, John 6.35. Verse 35, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. And then uh, 51 and 58 in 51, he says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. And then in 58, he says, This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like the bread the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Well, his words are spirit. He's talking about living on his word, of being washed with his word continually. And then in John On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit. Rivers of living water. Let's go now to uh, Revelation chapter 7. The book of Revelation is such an amazing book because it weaves in and out of itself over and over again. And the more you study it, the more you read it, the more you see these things. So in Revelation I'm going to uh, start at verse 13. Well, actually, I'm going to start at 9 because we'll be getting to this shortly and it'd be good to uh, have this in your mind. After, starting at 9, Revelation 7, 9. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. The two uh, words together again, God and the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these? 
clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed. their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Well, here you have, verse 15, they're before the throne of God. All right. And then 17, for the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd. Well, what throne? The throne of God. And he, the lamb, will guide them to springs of living water. And God, he, the lamb, will wipe away every tear from their eyes. So here you have this identification again with the throne of God, who we believe to be the Father, on the throne, but also the Lamb. And then I want to take you to one more scripture before we go back to Revelation chapter 22. And this is Isaiah 12. You will say in that day, I will give thanks to you, O I am. For though you were angry with me, your anger turned away that you might comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. Now, I'm going to go ahead and check this real quick. I believe that's the word Yeshua. So that is um, Isaiah 12. Let me go to that. Yes, Yeshua. God is my Yeshua. The name of Jesus. For though you were angry with me, your anger turned away that you might comfort me. Behold, God is my Yeshua. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord I am is my strength and my song, and he has become my Yeshua. With joy you will draw water from the wells of Yeshua. And you shall say in that day, Give thanks to I Am, call upon His name, make known His deeds among the peoples, proclaim that His name is exalted, sing praises to I Am, for He has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitant of Jerusalem, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel." The Holy One of Israel, I am God who became my Yeshua, who became my salvation. So we see this identification again. So now let's go to back to uh, Revelation 22. So I'll start with one again. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river, the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. So from the throne of God and of the Lamb, one throne, it's the throne of God and the Lamb. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. One, 
His servants will worship him, God, and the Lamb. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. One, God's face, the Lamb's face, his name will be on their foreheads, and night will be no more. They will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. And he said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. And the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, has sent his angel to show his servants what must soon take place. And behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Wow. That brings us back to Revelation chapter 1. Verse 3, blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear and who keep what is written, who keep what is written for the time is near. And then Jesus said, verse 7 of Revelation 22, blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. I, John, and the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who sh showed them to me. But he said to me, you must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets, and with those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. Now, Jesus accepts our worship. We do not accept worship. Jesus is different than we are. He is our creator. He died for us. We worship him in spirit and in truth. And then go to verse 12. Suddenly we have Jesus speaking. He says, Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me, to repay each one for what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, so that they may have the right to the tree of life, and that they may enter the city by the gates. Outside are the dogs and sorcerers and the sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and everyone who loves and practices a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. I am the root and descendant of David, the bright morning star. Remember we heard earlier as we were reading Revelation 4 and 5, the root of David. And then verse 17 says, The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let the one who hears say, Come. And let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires take the water of life without price. Jesus is the water of life. But now, 12 he said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Well, go back to Revelation chapter 1. In the um, very beginning, verse 4, says, Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness the firstborn of the dead. So we have, looks like the Father, the Spirit, and the Son. And yet now we've come to the end of Revelation. Chapter 22. And he says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Using the very same words. The same words that appeared to describe the Father are now being used to describe Jesus. 
And so let's go back now to Revelation 5. And this is where we saw the root of David. Verse 5 says, And the one of the elders said to me, Weep no more. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has overcome, so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. And between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders I saw a lamb standing as though it had been slain, with seven horns and with seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out unto all, into all the earth. And he went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who was seated on the throne. So you, here you have clearly a distinction between the Lamb and God the Father who is seated on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. So they're falling down to worship. It's as if God, the Father, is handing the scroll to himself who had become man, a man, and had overcome all things and became the firstborn of creation. The immortal, the eternal, the invisible had become visible had become the firstborn and see that's what God is calling us to But we don't get it. We don't get it. We just go our merry way. Sin way too often. Presume way too often. But the reason he came was in order for us to become fully made in his image, to become just like him. Our Father came in the flesh, died for us, so that we could be reconciled to him, so that we could be redeemed ransomed from the power of Satan by his blood. He paid the price for us, for our souls, so that we could be transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. So, in verse 8, Revelation 5, 8, we see, And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each holding a harp, and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain. 
and by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation, and you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, so we're talking millions upon millions, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. They worshipped the Lamb. They worshipped the Lamb. Only God accepts worship. 